Welcome everyone, welcome everyone. I see a lot of people are still coming into the chat. I mean, coming into the room. I'm glad I have a thousand license. <laughs> I know. I know. Everybody's super stoked and excited. Okay, we're going to get started. Shakina, you ready? Okay, perfect. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our Artist Speaker Series. I am Dr. Dolores Thompson, the Pathway Coordinator for Oakland School for the Arts, and this is our <laughs> third edition in a series of eight. The series is actually being designed to give our students performers an up close and personal look into the lives and careers of professional entertainers. So we hope you enjoy who we're bringing on today. I'm going to let our student moderators introduce our very special guests, but let me introduce them. They're both from the School of Theater. Please welcome Agosa and Shakina. Welcome. Hi, our guest speaker is known as an entertainment industry game changer. Seeing at the helm of the Fox Soul Network, Mr. James DeBose has dedicated his time and talent to bringing premier programming to television. Thank you. All right. Uh, so let's take a look at what's happening, what's happening on Fox Soul. David, can you run the clip? Turn it up from David. Thank 
sorry about that, guys. We experienced a little technical difficulties with the audio. But as you can see, the Fox Soul Network has a wonderful lineup of people who bring some great content and programming. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Agosa and Kina. Agosa, I think you're on mute. You might need to make him co-host. Okay, there we go. Okay, sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, we are so proud to have such a trailblazer here at OSA. Please welcome our special guest, Mr. James Dubois. Thanks for having me. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Mr. Dubois, would you like to share your journey into the world of entertainment with us? Okay. So um, first of all, I want to say congratulations to everybody that took the time to join today. Uh, I really appreciate that. And when I do these type of conversations, a lot of people want to ask about the entertainment business and, and the journey of getting into entertainment business and so forth. And we'll get to that, but I like sort of to take a different path because quite honestly, um, honest and real conversations about real life experiences to me is the greatest thing that's going to help anyone that's listening to this today. And my journey in, in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to help you one way or the other because your journey would be completely different. That's just the way God works. That's the way life works. Um, and so what, how I got there uh, was not necessarily the best way, I think, uh, to be honest. And I want to really start off by saying I never was taught about the first business that you enter into. And it's not the entertainment business or whatever business that you're in. It is the business called You Incorporated. And, it, and it's you. And it's so, um, we, we, we don't get the opportunity to hear about that a lot. We don't get the opportunity to learn about that a lot. And unfortunately, if you don't know you, if you can't handle the business of yourself first and foremost, the business of entertainment, like any other business, will eat you up. And you hear so many stars that you think outside looking in has everything, but they're internally suffering because no one has ever taught them about the business of you. And the one thing, no matter what you choose to do or the journey you go through, is that trials and tribulations will come. Those cousins do not discriminate. And unless you understand who you are and handle, handle those, even at this age that you guys are, it will affect you forever. Um, and we pray for things, we want things, and we ask God to bless us with things. But I'm gonna be the first to tell you that a blessing given too soon becomes nothing but a burden. Because it's not about being at the right, it's not about the being at the right place at the right time, getting things done. It's about being the right person at the right place at the right time. And, and there's a lot to unpack there. And I wanna say my trials and tribulations didn't come through financial hardships or death or all the things that we think about in trials and tribulations. My trials and tribulations came through success. At the moment that I had success, that was the worst thing that could have happened to me because I never knew how to handle myself. And it became a real burden for me, um, just in truth. And that's where I want to start this conversation. First and foremost, I'm not talking to you guys because I'm special. I take the time out to talk to you guys because you're special. And I want you to understand your value. No one that sits in the seat of myself could be doing a million different things. But we take the time out to do things like this because of you. And I'm telling you up front at this point in time right now, your value and who you are and what you're trying to do in your dreams is about me to sit here and want to talk to you today. So I'll go briefly through my journey, but I want you to clearly hear what I'm saying about my past and not just the fact that I've done projects that you may know about, that I'm here uh, running the network, Fox Soul and so forth. That just comes with hard work and faith and not giving up. But there's a lot to that. And when I go back to the, to the conversation about you incorporated, I'm from North Carolina. 
Um, the area I grew up in, a lot of us don't dream that big as factories. We think about working 30 years and so forth and so on. I was a sports star in my hometown. All I thought about is making it in sports and entertainment. That's all I've ever done. I DJed early on at the age 12 and so forth. I just, all that stuff, I had success with, with sports. And that taught me, unfortunately, early on that with success, that's when you are loved. That's when people know you. That's when people want to uh, get be around you. You become sort of quote unquote popular and famous. But I knew in my heart of hearts, I never wanted to be famous or popular. I just wanted to be effective in everything that I did. But that didn't always happen. And because I didn't understand my own internal things that I was dealing with, because I never had the opportunity to speak truth to myself because I didn't know when the success did come, I didn't handle them right. So I played football, graduated from Wake Forest University, had an opportunity to go to the Detroit Lions. None of that worked out like I had dreamed. But from there, I came to Los Angeles, bought myself a one-way ticket, stayed in a hotel for a month, built relationships, got the opportunity to start as a production assistant. And from there, I just worked hard in new division that I wanted to do. I skipped all of that because that's really not the most important part I wanna convey real quick to you guys. 2005, I started my own business, Dubos Entertainment. My first show out the gate was the Keisha Cole, The Way It Is series. First time I had ever did anything on my own. From there, I did that. I did the Tiny and Toya show, Monica, the Mike Vick project, Comic, Comic View, Hell Date, a lot of other shows. At one point, I believe I had seven, seven shows on the air at one time. I employed a lot of, lot of people, um, gave, was able to bless enough to give a lot of people a lot of opportunities. But despite all of that, I was miserable. I was unhappy, literally in my office and in my house, I would, I would cry almost every single day because that blessing became a burden because I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't ready for the success. I didn't know how to handle that because I never got a chance to know me. I started being in the entertainment circles that I never thought I would be in coming from where I come from. I started having people call me that I never thought knew my number. All the things that we dream about at you guys' age that we want to have happen to us was the worst thing that could have happened to me because I didn't know me. I started living a lie and started thinking I had to be what everyone else thought I should be, being in the position that I'm in. And I'm, I want to tell you that whatever your journey is as you move forward, focus on you every day. Be okay with who you are and what you have, and don't look at anyone else to, to, to define your success, whether it, it is where you are now or where you intend to be. Um, because no one defines you but you. Success is how you think about it every day. And so in 2013, I became the lowest of I've ever been. And everybody knew me, everyone knew my name, my shows were, were being successful, but yet I was dying a slow death. To the point that I eventually had to be going to a facility for suicidal things because I had become that low. And I, instead of enjoying my success and building on my success, I spent seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years hiding my pain because I never ran the business of you. Now, why do I tell you this, this story? You may think this is a celebration of us because when people ask me about any business, especially the entertainment business, I can only bay off the experience that I had because I didn't know the business of me. So whether your, your home life is what it is, your friends are what they are. I don't know any of that about any of you, but none of that really matters if you stay the focus on you. If you wanna be an exec producer, you wanna be a, a music artist, you wanna be whatever it is, you will never be as extremely successful as you are until you are happy with you right where you are right now. Patience is the, seat of, is the key to success. Every time you rush, you're eventually gonna crash. You have to start over, but you notice the patient ones go slow at a time and they eventually get to the finish line before the people that are rushing because they rarely crash. 
because they're learning the lessons and appreciating the lessons and most importantly, are learning themselves. We all get into relationships in some form or fashion and we keep switching relationships because we say we outgrew the person. No, we outgrew ourselves. We outgrew who we were when we first got in that particular relationship because we didn't know ourselves. It's an evolution. And I want today to focus on you guys really learning yourself, really being, write down your goals of what you want to be, but don't expect that. You see, People that come on these type of Zooms is uh, uh, what I like to call very visionary. You guys are visionary. I consider myself a visionary. But being a visionary is very, very difficult to live with. And here's why. Because you could see what can be. But you have to wake up and live with what is every day. And that's very, very hard to deal with because you want to get to where you could see it. And no one else could see it but you for your vision and for your life but you gotta wake up and deal with your household, deal with finances, deal with everything. You gotta deal with what is, and it could beat you down. And you think once I get to where I wanna go, I'm gonna be extremely happy, it's gonna be everything I dreamed of. And it never is unless you're happy with where you are right now. And so the entertainment business in essence, you hear a lot of people that commit suicide in entertainment business that you think have all the money in the world, to have all the fame in the world, to have everything. And it's, it's, it's not talked about a lot, especially in the black community because it has become so taboo, if you will. And I wanna get it ahead of the forefront not to talk to you young people like that, but you guys are our future. You guys are our future entertainment. And if I'm not honest with you now about yourself, it was gonna continue down the line because this business will eat you up. If you don't have the right circle, if you don't have the right team, and if you don't have the right mindset, the right faith, and most importantly, if you don't know you. And, but through all of that, when you learn you and you put in the work to you, as I had to do in a very, very three years, I didn't do anything. Everyone was, you know, the, the, the hard part in life, and you guys can experience this, the good news they tell the neighbor, bad news they tell the neighborhood. <laughs> and that's what life does to you. And I thought my career was over because no one knew what was going on with me. But then I, someone told me that you, to step into your anointment is the fact that God kept you here for a reason. And then he brought me Fox Soul. Fox Soul is my life. We come to Fox Soul to discuss the totality of our community. We want to celebrate our rhythms as well as our blues. And so when you are here and you want to know about entertainment business and so forth, be careful who you're listening to about the effects of you should go this route and you should be this and you should be that. All you have to be is you. All you have to understand is your gifts would take you to where you got to be, but you want to know who you are so that your gifts don't take you places that your character can't keep you. I want to say that again. I don't care if you have the most money in the world. A lot of people money would take them places that the character can't keep them. So prepare yourself now at this age, at this time to be the greater you. So when you walk in the room, no one can change you. No matter what room you're in. Go in as yourself. Go in as proud of being yourself. And now when you get that job that you're looking for, and when you get that opportunity that you're looking for, you understand why you have it. You understand your value. You understand what you bring to the table because a lot of times in this business, people will make you think they're doing you favors, that you have no value outside of them. And I'll be the first to tell you, everyone that I bring on the Fox Soul as an employee, talent, or what have you, if you don't have more value than I have, then I don't want you around me because I've learned I don't ever want to be the smartest in the room ever again. Like the old saying says, if you want to be a millionaire, then you got to hang around millionaires. If you want to grow and be smart, you got to put the most people that are smarter than you around you. And the smartest people that you'll ever be around are the people that tell you the truth about yourself. 
not the people that's going to come and tell you their, their journey and tell you how great things are and outside looking in. I don't want to tell you any of that. I'll let the work speak for that. What I want to tell you is trials and tribulations are going to come. And I want to prepare you to overcome that. And the only way that happens, if you are comfortable with who you are and face who you are and you go and you look in the mirror for something other than getting dressed. So with that said, I'll open up the Q and A and, and I hope you guys got something out of that message. Wow, that was amazing. I just want to share with everybody. The reason why I reached out to James is because I watched him being interviewed on Instagram by Keisha Cole and just his presence of truth. I was on my bed in tears because here is somebody who, like he said, we expect the shiny and the great and the fabulous, but he opened up and he was so transparent with who he was that I was actually in tears. And that's why I wanted to have him. And, and I'm grateful that he, he agreed to come. That's why I wanted him to come because I've been in this business since I was 19. I started out in television and I've never seen that type of transparency from an executive, from a head of programming. You know, these are the people that you look at and everybody's like this. This man bared his soul on Instagram and I was all the better for it. Just like now, I'm, I'm like, wow, so appreciative. So with that said, so you guys know, not just because he is the head of programming at a network that I love, but because he is real enough to come on and I knew he would tell you guys the truth. That's why I wanted him here today. So um, Agosa and Kina, I'll turn it back over to you so you can call names to ask questions. I see a lot of hands up. I see a lot of hands up. Okay, the first question can be asked by Alicia. Alicia, Alicia. I don't know how to say her name, sorry. Yes, yes, it's Alicia. Um, can you please say what you said earlier? Your gifts can't take you everywhere your character can? No, what I'm saying is be careful that your gifts take you to places that your character can't keep you. So you may can buy your way into a room or you may be talented enough to get you in a room. We see it in sports every day. We have so many talented sports people, but eventually they keep going, getting traded or eventually cut from team to team. Why? Because their character doesn't allow people to want to continue to put up with their talent, no matter how great they are. So you may be great at what you are and you may be the best at it, but if your character, if your attitude, if you can't get along with people, if you don't know how to talk to people, and most importantly, if you don't know how to uplift someone else, lift it as you climb, eventually that room is gonna shut down on you because people just wanna be led and respected and heard. So that's what I mean when you say, don't let your gifts or your money or your talent take you to places that your character can't keep you. Uh, so next question, uh, Piper Spurs, uh, Piper. Spurs, yeah, thank you. Um, is there a good way in your opinion to teach others that you wanna do like entertainment for the art and not for the fame? Like kind of what you said about character um, like, how can you like fully let someone know that like you're doing this because like you want to? I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. No, no. I, if if I understand you properly, you want you you're asking and correct me if I'm wrong. How do you get other people to see that this is a passion for you and not just you don't want to be famous? You want to do the work, right? Did I understand that properly? Where did she she leave? So. If I, if, I, if, I, if I heard you right. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I could is that, is that Okay. Um, so the first of all, you, again, don't worry about what people, how to, don't focus on trying to make people see what you are. When you're passionate about something, when your drive is, is what it's supposed to be, they'll see it just through your work and through your effort. And then you have to have faith enough to know that, that even if it doesn't seem like you are getting anywhere or people that may not have your character or your drive are getting ahead of you because relationships, 
eventually it works itself out. Don't change who you are. Don't worry about it. People see you. As long as you see you, that that energy and and, and that aura about you will, will eventually find the right person. It it'll, it'll attract itself to the right person, and that person will help you get to where you need to go. You don't have to go seeking it. It'll seek you. Thank you so much. I have a. This is Miss Stevens. Hi. I have a couple questions that. Hi. Um, in the chat from a little bit earlier. I, I just want to make sure they get their, their questions in because they messaged me. Okay. Um, just two questions. One was, um, do you know if Fox Soul is a part of Fox, Fox News and how that works? And the other question was, um, how do you know, how did you know that you would be financially stable during your process? Well, let me ask, um, let me ask, answer this, the second question first, and then I'll get into the Fox News. Did I know that I would be financially stable in my yeah. process of what? Like, uh, how did you know you would be financially stable? And I'm assuming this was just in the chat. So I'm assuming it has to be during your process of like, um, uh, getting the, the exact question is, how did you know you would be financially stable during the process? That was the exact question. So I um, guess sure. interpret sure. it as you will. So let me be clear. I'm not financially stable now. Someone told me if you can count your money, then you don't have enough. So keep that in mind, and that goes from there. Um, but but in all seriousness, I never really thought about the money. Money wasn't. I mean, I've struggled my whole life, and not that anyone wants to struggle. But the point is, I always wanted to just be effective, and then look back and see where the money was. Because when you start thinking, I don't want to suffer and I don't want to sacrifice and I don't want to do certain things because I'm not going to make enough money, then you start to compromise what you really want to do. So I don't really know if there's a such thing as a financial stability. Even the people that you may think are rich wake up and deal with some type of battle every day. Um, you may see these guys that or, or that you see on the internet, for instance, and you, they have $500 million, for instance. But what you don't see is they have $499 million in debt through the houses, through the cars, and through all that stuff. And when you're going forward, you see all these things. And what you, you learn is they tell you what your assets are on those type of things, but they don't put the liabilities. And, and, and so I had to learn. I've lost a ton of money, been completely rock bottom. I want to be clear, I've had money, lost a ton of money. I had no idea, but the dollar will make you respect it one way or the other. <laughs> and I've come to respect the dollar. But I say all that to say, trying to live what you think is true. And I don't want to get into a financial thing about this, but live what you could live so that you could do what you want to do. My whole goal for me and what I try to do for my kids is to, is to do what I can so they could do what they want to, not what they have to do. And so it is really true that if you make a dollar, live like you make 50 cents. And if you could learn that simple one thing, um, you, you rarely ever will have financial issues because you're not living based on exactly what you make. You're living less than what you make and therefore you always have some surplus. Now, the first question is Fox Solar part of Fox News? No. And but I want to really I get I get to ask this question a lot because Fox is attached to the soul. When we first started talking about Fox Soul back in uh, March of 2019, one of the biggest things that was for me is that, and I want to be completely transparent when I was talking to the Fox Corp team and so forth, is we're not gonna do this, and I'm not gonna be the black face where the people of not of the culture are going to be pulling the strings behind the scenes. I had no interest in that, and they had no interest in that. That's not and and to, to true to form to this very day. To this very day, they've not tried to involve themselves in the culture. They believe in us. They back us and so forth. But this is a business thing. I want people to understand. Fox Corp owns a lot of businesses. Fox Corporation owns Fox News. Fox Corporation owns Fox Soul. Fox Corporation owns Fox Entertainment, Fox Sports, so forth. We're just another part of their portfolio, but we're completely different entities. If you own two or three different businesses, you don't necessarily, they work together. It's just a part of your portfolio. 
So I just want to be clear about that, that um, there's not people behind the scenes pulling the string and running Fox. So if you look at our content, that's clearly that someone of the culture for the culture is, is pro providing the content. But I must say that Fox has been a true blessing um, to us. And I want to say this is not, this wasn't, and the reason I really have to applaud them because this is not a part of the Black Lives Matters and all this stuff. Fox so happened before all of this happened. They saw the value because we made them see the value. We believed in what we were doing. And furthermore, if it wasn't gonna be the way we knew our culture needed it, then it wasn't going to happen. So you can't be afraid to say no, because sometimes that's the most powerful word that you could ever say is no. So to, to not to go off in the detail like that, but we're a part of Fox Corporation, but we're not a part of Fox News in no way, shape or form. Um, so Donovan, would you like to ask you a question now? Yeah, um, just um, what are you, what are, is some advice you have or just some words on depression? Because you seem to be, you seem to be very wise in that category. And I just want your opinion and, uh, and also just like how to get through it too. I want to be very careful because I'm not a doctor by no stretch. Uh, I want to be very careful how I answer that particular question. But Donovan, the reason I'm knowledgeable of it because I've actually experienced it. I'm not telling you what I read through a book or what I, I'm telling you my experience. And the first thing is to admit that it's okay not to be okay. You know, it's okay to have someone you can talk to and it's not to be okay. It's okay to know that you're growing and that you have to grow in there and what your triggers are. Um, I would just honestly say is find somebody that you could truly talk to without feeling embarrassed, without feeling like they're gonna try to talk you out of feeling what you're feeling, without somebody that's gonna try to guide you. They just gonna listen. Because most of us that's going through that particular state, it's we just need an ear. We need to be understood, we need to be heard, and we want to be seen. The problem is not only was my success making me invisible to myself because I was living a lot, but my success made me made my pain and my suffering invisible, in, in, invisible to everyone else. Because no, they, they no longer stopped seeing James, the person. They started seeing James, the producer. And so surround yourself with people that see you. And when I say that, someone again is going to tell you the truth of how they feel. Not necessarily that they're right, but at least they care about you enough to point out the things that you may could do better. And see, um, I don't know if you go to therapy. I, I, I still go and I went, I wanna be clear. See what happens is, and this is so important to me, is what I realized over the course of the years is that why we feel so good when we leave therapy is because we have to pay someone to tell us the truth about ourselves. When we learn to look in the mirror and be truthful ourselves, when we finally have an honest conversation with who we are and what we're going through, we say, wow, I feel lighter, I feel so good. Because we have a habit of lying to ourselves. Oh, I'm okay. Oh no, I'm not feeling like this. I'm gonna be all right. Um, I don't feel bad, that's just whatever. But inside your spirit knows that's not true. But then you go to therapy and they tell you, the facts and you see it from their perspective and you feel so good when you walk out for that hour. And then when you go home a couple hours later, you get back to the same depressions because you're back to lying to yourself. And what I'm saying to you is be honest with you first, accept that it's okay not to be okay. There's nothing wrong with you. You're no different than anyone else. Honestly, you're probably just smarter because you're, you're willing to ask the questions and admit that you don't feel good. And I'll say, you can have my number directly when we're done. If you ever need anyone to talk to about that and so forth, you can pick up the phone and call me. And I promise you, I will call you back and answer the questions anytime. That's what this is about, is helping each other. The next question is from Savannah Martinez. Hi, um, I, first of all, I just wanna say your whole like 
talk was amazing. I loved how real you were with us, you know, because it's a lot of people lie and, you know, you can tell when they're not authentic. So I really like you sharing your personal experience. And also, I kind of want to say, like, make a comment and then I have a question. Sorry. Um, but I think personality and how, like, your manners is really, really, like, I, um, like, a story I have is, like, uh, this producer was texting me and well, emailing me and he was wanting to work with me. And by accident, I didn't respond or no, I responded and we had a meeting and I was late to the meeting and then he didn't want to talk to me again. And so that was a real shock for me, but you know, um, I didn't, even if I did work with him, I still wouldn't want to because he wasn't willing to work with me for my talent and I was five minutes late, but you know, it was crazy. But I think it really affects like your attitude and how you talk to people it's really important in the music industry. My question is from a producer's point of view, do you have any tips or advice on people who are trying to like audition for shows or yeah, auditions? Yeah. Um, yeah, so let me speak to you being late, first of all. And, and I don't know where you are in terms of things, but to everybody, uh, being late is expensive. If you got credit cards and you late on your bill, that interest rate goes up. Being late in any form of life is very expensive. And that costs you the potential to do to do work. So be if you're not five minutes early, you're late. Being late is very costly and expensive. Now, in terms of auditioning, to be in front of the camera and so forth, I'll just tell you, Savannah, that is prepare yourself for a lot of rejection, right? It doesn't necessarily mean you're not good. It doesn't necessarily mean you're not, it's just that they you're not for that role in their mind. Um my suggestion is go to as many things as you possibly can um, to just to get the work in um, and to really know the door you're walking into. Um, you know, I've had people call me and, 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 and call the company, for instance, as an example, and wanted to pitch me movies. And I'm like, you obviously haven't watched the network because we're not there where we're not doing movies yet. So if you go walk in thinking you're going to, to audition for some drama filled position and you have no idea that this is for comedy, you haven't studied, you are done from, from that moment. So a lot of times do the extra work because 99% of the people with all due respect are just doing just enough. And just enough will keep you just enough. And if you just do the extra little thing, the extra studying, the being there early, staying there late, knowing more than what you're going for, if there's two parts and you know both instead of just the one you're going for, it shows that you have the character, that's what I go back to, that you wanna be great because you understand what everyone's job is. If you have to audition with someone else and y'all are having lines and that has that role, you have that role, you should know both. And the moment you're able to tell that person their lines, if they forget, that's a big, big uh, thing that goes off in the producer's mind. Like, wow, they took the time to learn everything. So just go the extra mile. Be great with yourself. That, that's my advice to you on that. Cool. So um, Jack Russ. Um, I have a question like, um... How do you get your foot in the doorway? How do you um, like get no, like um, like sort of like tell the tell the powers that be like I'm here, and um, just sort of like I guess what I'm asking is like how do you get noticed by those people and and like begin that whole journey to like your dream goal? Right. Um, everything is relationships. Or everything. Everything in life is about relationships. Uh, and then the talent showcases itself. So I can tell you, you get in the door by, by showing up to things like this. Because now you have someone like myself who you can reach out to, hey, I saw you, I listened to you, I asked you a question on, 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 on this particular platform. I will remember that. And the fact that you showed up and the fact that you asked questions and the fact that you showed interest in something that you want to do, that makes someone like me want to help. So it's about relationships. Don't take for granted that I'm not there yet. Anytime you get an opportunity to meet someone, to get on these type of um, calls and, and Zooms with someone, do that and speak up so they remember you, so that they know you. Um, 
It's about relationships. Like I could probably take someone out of this crowd right now, make a phone call and say, I really need you to give this person a job. And because I have a genuine relationship with them and they have one with me, you'll get your foot in the door. That's how life happens. There's no secret, it's relationships. Okay, the next question is from Piper. Sorry, I already went. Someone can go if it's oh, okay. So the next is Trevor Walton. So throughout your career, how did you improve your work ethic to improve your character? Um, the work ethic was never questioned. You was never gonna. You was never gonna outwork me. You know, I used to, I used to always say, even coming up doing sports, is you may outthink me. Um, but you're never going to outwork me. And if I can outthink you and outwork you, you have no chance in the room with me. That's just the, always been my thing. So the work ethic has always been there. I've always gone the extra mile because I love what I do. It's a passion. How I got better um, in life is I got better being honest with myself. I got better with me. I improved. Um, and again, I, I just always say, I used to, it wasn't a success that brought me the gift. It was my gift that brought me my success. So even when I lost everything, I was so down and depressed because I thought I lost everything. But the one thing when I remembered is that it was my gift that brought me what I had. And as long as I never lost my gift, I never lost anything. I just got to start over again. So the thing is constantly investing in yourself, reading books, self-help books, reading things about yourself, reading, learning, and bettering yourself every day so that you will be better and taking on things in, in, in the world. Don't, you know, focus on your craft, obviously keep doing all the things, whatever that you want to do and so forth. But, but, but we take so little time in investing in ourselves. We take so little time in that. Um, and, 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 and pay for something for yourself. I don't care if it's a dollar. We, we, we tend to, uh, pay more attention to things that cost us money than what's free. Um, and so just 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 invest in your stuff. Invest in books, invest in studying, invest in relationships, invest in growing who you are, and invest in learning yourself. At this early age right now, because all I'm trying to do is help you avoid the pitfalls that I that I took and 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 the, and the um, potholes that I had to hit, unfortunately. I feel like I had to hit every pothole that I had to another realize I couldn't go that direction. But that was my lot in life. Um, but then hopefully I can pass that along to you. So, so just invest in yourself is the greatest thing I can tell you. And that's how I grew and got better. Honest with myself, invested in myself. And every single day I wake up with gratitude, asking God to make me better today than I was yesterday. I don't wake up asking for money. I don't wake up asking for another job. I don't wake up asking for any of that. I wake up and say, make me better today than I was yesterday. And everything else will fall into place. Um, so I see a question in the chat. What are successful ways of advertising your art and assets? Successful ways in advertising your arts and assets? Yeah. What are successful ways of advertising your art and assets? That's what it's, that's what's written there. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that means, but I mean, the best way of advertising anything is just is is is, is showing people, and, yeah. and 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 getting other people to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I think they're probably talking about promotion. How do you promote yourself? How do you get your art out there? Got it. Um, so in today's climate, you have so many ways to <laughs> for, for everyone to see. Take advantage of it. Again, learn the social media aspect. Learn everything. Um, and 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 don't be afraid to hear someone say they don't like your art. Don't be afraid to, 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 to have people not necessarily appreciate what you do. Um, because a lot of that brings fear and fear keeps a lot of us from putting our stuff out there because we don't want to hear nobody say they don't like it. But you gotta, again, that's why I say start with you, do it for yourself, but promote it, get on social media, um, get in front of people that maybe have an influence. And if you're not a great speaker, you don't like talking about yourself and your art, then 
find someone um, that is a great speaker and partner with them. You know, an another philosophy I like to do is, is work your strengths and partner with your weaknesses. But you have to learn what your weaknesses are before you can find the right partner. So just promote, 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 and uh, don't be afraid to partner with some people and don't be afraid to say what you're not good at so that you can get your product. Because the end game is for people to understand your art. The next question is from Ava and she doesn't really understand what your job is. So she's wondering if you can go more in depth into that. Got it, okay. Um, so as the head of program and executive producer with Fox, so I am the final say on um, anything that you see on air, everything that happens with the network, it basically has to come, come through me um, and the team. I don't make decisions by myself. I don't ever want nobody to think that. You, you know, greatness is never a one man show. Don't ever forget that. Um, and there's a lot of people that you don't hear about that you don't see that are much smarter than me um, that, that help out with this process. So my job is as a, people pitch shows, I decide if we're gonna pick them up or not. Um, I decide the program and what's gonna air, what time. I hire um, and I'm, I'm, I'm charged with the task of growing the network to eventually come in 24 hours of, of, of programming. And so in a, in, a, in, a, in a nutshell, that's that's what my job is, is to oversee Fox Soul from, from soup to nuts, from every, everything that's involved when it comes to come through me. Shuler, I'm sorry if I'm sorry I pronounced that wrong. A Shiler. It's Skyler. Oh. Um, um, my question is, what inspired you to become a TV producer? Um, I didn't wake up saying I wanted to be a TV producer. I just wanted to entertain. I had, I always was into creative storytelling. Um, I always love stories I, and and I wanted to tell stories that I grew up with I wanted to tell stories that I understood so I didn't even know what a TV producer was to be honest with you at at a certain age I just know I wanted to tell stories and I saw people that was telling stories so I, I needed to get into that business um so that 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 made me my why um and and, and I want to speak this to you as well I want you to always try to remember whatever you decide to do, try to ask yourself why and try to answer that question. Um, because if your why is not as important or big enough than your how, then you'll always be stuck because you're trying to figure out how to do it. And that stops a lot of people as well. So make sure you understand why I wanna be a producer or why I wanna be a music artist. And if it's just to be famous as that, because if you know why you want to do it, and that is so important to you, how you get there, that's none of your business. Give that to God, and you just work on the why and keep it going. So I had no idea I wanted to be a TV producer. I just know why I wanted to tell stories. Amazing. Um, before we wrap this up, I want our moderators, because they have questions, I want them to be able to answer their questions, and then we'll go ahead and uh, thank James and wrap it up. So Kina, go right ahead. Okay, so I know you went to Wake Forest University. So my question is, what did you study there that helped you for your career? Um, well, in the beginning as a freshman, I didn't study anything, I almost got kicked out. So let me just say that first of all, <laughs> I was an idiot. But um, my, my degree is in broadcast communication. Uh, like I said, I, I played football there as well. I went there on a, on a full scholarship. Um, but again, everything I've been blessed, so blessed. If I look back, all I've ever done was sports and entertainment. Um, I can't, that has nothing to do with me. That's just a real, real blessing. I studied it. I did the radio classes, the TV classes, philosophy. Um, but everything I sent it around was, was, in broadcast, was in broadcast communication. Um, my question is, what are the ways what are the top ways we can find who we are? Um, just like, yeah, that's my question. What are the, I'm sorry, repeat that again. What are the top ways we can find out who we are? Who you are? Well, like, what are like tips to like, oh, like. 
Yeah. Um, I got you. So uh, you got a pen and paper? I want you to write these three down, three things down for me. It's so important. And this is your homework. When you get around certain people, I want you to notice what you feel like. Do they bring you good energy? Do you feel good around them? Do you feel apprehensive around them? Do you feel fearful around them? Do you feel inspired around them? Based on your energy, you'll know what you like and what you don't like from that. And from that, you can start to build the right circle for yourself. That's the first thing. The second thing is you should wake up every day and just give five minutes to yourself and think about the mistakes you made. Ask yourself, what did I fail at today, yesterday? What did I not do well? And if you can't do that, then you don't know yourself well because we fail every day at something. Everybody, I don't care what they tell you or not, we can be better. That's the second thing. And the third thing I want you to do is ask yourself, why am I here? And I want you to hear that one most important part. Why do you think God has blessed you to be here? And if you can answer that and say, I'm gonna leave my mark by doing this, you'll learn more and more about who you are. A lot of us just go through life and letting the wind take us wherever the day takes us and we have no focus and we have no thing. And it's, and it's hard being young, but this is the moment in time. And, and, and I wanna say before I move on to Ms. Thompson and, and, and Stevens and David and everyone that's involved with the school, like congratulations, please keep doing what you're doing. It's so necessary and it's so needed. And I just hope everyone, young kids that are on here, really realize how much they are doing for you and your growth and really appreciate them. Because a lot of us don't have the opportunity that you have right now. Mr. Ford, I see a lot of people on here. So I just want to just make it very clear that stay connected to people like this that are guiding you and helping you and, and taking the time to bring speak, speakers in to help help with that. So but back to if you can just do those three things every day, not giving you much more. And if you be honest with yourself, you'll start to learn you a little bit more. And then you'll figure out moving forward from there how to learn yourself even more. Because there's an evolution. You know, we, we, we grow every day and you're never going to hit it and be grateful for the journey. Be grateful that you don't know it all, because if you knew it all, then what else did you have to live for? Well, thank you so much. I just want to personally thank you for, I mean, you immediately responded when I hit you up on Instagram and mm -hmm. that's rare guys. It's rare. Um, so I consider us blessed to have you. Um, the nuggets that you drop, I'm taking notes, um, you know, so everything that you said has made us better today because we're going to take heed to it. And I, again, want to thank Latanya Drake, your assistant for setting everything up. She's a beautiful person. And I just want to let you know how much I enjoy Fox Soul Television. I watch Thank it all you. the time. I am with the Thank cocktails you. with the queens. Um, <laughs> Thank so, you. so again, personally, just from me to you, thank you. I'll let Agosa and Kina take it from here. And thank you for having me. I don't take it for granted. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank all of you for, for thinking of me enough. Think enough of me to make to, to have me ask me to do this. Thank you. Unfortunately, our time has come to an end. We want to thank our very special guest, entertainment trailblazer, Mr. James Dubois. Your words have been an inspiration and for some of us life change. You are now a part of the OSA family. All right, thank you, thank you. Congratulations to you guys as well, all right? We also want to thank the OSA admin, including our pathway coordinator, Dr. Thompson, and our director of technology, Mr. David Smith. And thank you for attending. We'll see you at our next speaker series. And by the way, we have just added graffiti artist legend, Fab Five Freddy as a speaker. So look forward to that. Invite me to that. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Thank you. He's, He's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Guys, have Thanks. a blessed day. All right. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye. Tina, Igosa.
Wonderful job. Thank you so much. Thank you to Dee Dee Stevens for helping me out with this. And always thank you to our executive director, Lisa Sherman Colt, our principal, Mike Oz, Katie Zog, our vice principal, for allowing the time and space for this to happen. Thank you for supporting me as I support our students and everyone on the, on the Zoom. Thank you for showing up. David, a big shout out to you. Always down for the cause. I appreciate you and I thank you. I have a quick announcement from uh, Miss, uh, no, no, Miss, Miss Schneider. Um, this is a reminder that we are hiding, we are holding a student run, a student run senior check in and update at noon on Tuesday, December 15th, following the um, artist speaker series. So Tuesday, December 15th, following the artist speaker series, Havana and Diego will facilitate an overview of senior activities in the making. Uh, what we can do, what we know, and what we don't know. Then students will get a chance to talk in breakouts about feelings, needs, ideas, and fun stuff for senior year. And all are welcome. And there's a link that was given to me, but I can't really share that. But yeah, so that you guys should prepare for that on December 15th. Good job. All right, that's it. I will see you guys later. Thank you, Agosa, Kena. Dynamite job. I appreciate you guys. I'm logging off. Bye, everybody. Have a nice day.